Right before that, what was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about? What is the theme of the ayat right before that? Does anyone remember? You can go through Surah Al-Fajr in your head. Right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to us about Ad, Thamud, Fir'aun, right? These nations that thought that they had excelled to a point where they were un where they were completely invincible and unstoppable, where they could not be held accountable by anything higher to them, and they simply did not believe that there was anything higher than them because of the advancements that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed them to make. So you had these nations, and then you had this one man who was more arrogant than all of these nations put together in Fir'aun, who thought that they were invincible because they were invincible for they were invincible for a few for a few years or however long Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed them to be that way. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us to a very, very dangerous disease. These next two ayat are extremely scary. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here does not address just the disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the human being. A very, very common illness and disease in the human being. فَأَمَّنْ insan. Fa, as a result of all of this that you heard. Fa sabiya, the letter fa means that it's connected to the previous ayat. You see what happened to all those nations that came before, and you see what happened to Fir'aun who came before you. And the insan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so as for an insan, وَمَا سُمِّيَ insan إِلَّا لِمَسْهِهِ That the human being was named insan because he's forgetful. Nisyan, he always forgets. As for the human being, إِذَا مَبْتَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ When his Lord tests him, and ibtila is one of the forms of test. And Imam al Qushayr rahimahullah says in the Qaf al Isha'at, the strongest form of, of test. You have balwa, you have, you have different types of tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. Ibn Tila is a very, very severe test. Something that, subhanAllah, you know, if you're reading this ayah, you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to talk about now a disaster that's going to happen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do that. أَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا نَبْتَ لَهُ رَبُّ When his Lord tests him. And one of the linguistic features of this, the Mufassirin, they say, إِذَا بُتَلَاهُ is, 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 the more, is, is the way people would use it in Arabic whenever he is tested. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reinforces that he's the one carrying out the test. إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ Allah is the one testing him. فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ Two favors that Allah gives him. أَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ أَكْرَمَهُ means that he gave him honor. He honored him. And the Mufassirin say what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about fame and status and position. So this person, when he walks out, he has position. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him fame in the eyes of the people, whether it's, it's in his small social circle, it's amongst his family members, it's in his community, or it's nationwide, or it's globally, whatever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him some form of honor. And Allah says, فَأَكْرَمَهُ Allah is the only one, He is al Karim, who can give that honor to anyone because he's the most honorable subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa na'ama, and he gives him wealth and he gives him money. فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا So that person then says, my Lord has honored me. Now here's the thing, you can read this in two ways. You can read this as, فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا Or you can read this as, رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا my Lord chose me. My Lord honored me. Right? What is the disease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here? When a person is doing well in dunya, although he's not carrying out the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we somehow become deceived by all the good that's happening in our lives and we think, well, that must mean that Allah is pleased with me. So long as no earthquakes are taking place in my area, so long as my house has not collapsed, so long as I don't have any issues with my school, or any issues with my work, or any issues with this, any issues with my family, that means Allah is pleased with me. 
And this is such a horrible disease. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us about Aad? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whenever they were being threatened and they were constantly being warned. Whenever they saw the clouds coming, Allah was actually going to destroy them. But they thought they were so invincible. The prophets are telling them Allah is going to destroy you. And they're, they're so used to living in luxury that whenever they see all the clouds coming and things of that sort, they're saying, oh, this is coming to give us more rain. <laughs> but this is actually what we were rushing. <laughs> this is a, a punishment, a wind that has within it a very powerful and painful punishment. Again, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you good, I'll never forget one incident that took place. Shaykh al Abid, he always mentions that my father in law, when he was the Imam of Baton Rouge, I remember we once were, were uh, stopping by and we stopped at a gas station. And I know none, you're not going to believe this, but the person working at the gas station was a Muslim. Selling alcohol too. I don't know if any of you have ever seen that before. But it was actually a Muslim selling alcohol. So, subhanAllah, Abu Abid, the Shaykh, he says to him, he says, you know, why don't you start coming to the masjid? We don't even see you in the masjid. You know, at least come to Salat al-Jum'ah. And he said, Ana Rabbi bihibni. My Lord loves me. How do you know Allah loves you? Look at everything He's given me. The house, the cars, the money, the kids, but here's the problem. Allah is using this as bait. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reeling him in from a position that he's not recognizing. When Allah gives you blessings, and you are not thankful for those blessings, and you are not acting according to the guidelines of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know that those blessings are a greater punishment than what is manifest punishment in this dunya. And I'll give you this example because Allah to be tested with blessings is much harder than being tested with hardship and poverty. And I'll give you this example. This is something that happened with me in Jordan, right? In Jordan, we don't have heaters. I'm sure many of you um, would understand that. Uh, and you, in your countries, maybe you don't have that either. So it's freezing cold. So what happens when you have a space heater and that space heater is right in front of you? And then it's time for Salat al-Fajr and you have to make wudu. The wudu is so painful. The moment that you step out of that space heater, it's more pain than had you not had the space heater at all. Right? You almost got deceived by it because you almost forgot that you don't have central heat. SubhanAllah, because there is heat blowing directly on you. What does that mean? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you a blessing, and Allah is reeling you in, and you're not thankful for those blessings, and you're not acting according to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, until they are pleased with what they have, we snatch them all of a sudden and then they're left in despair. So don't be deceived by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. It could be a punishment. It could just be a punishment. If you're thankful, however, and if you're making du'a, if you're trying your best to live according to those those guidelines and things of that sort, then alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. And think about this, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in Abu Dawood, the very neglected sunnah, a beautiful sunnah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if someone gets a new garment or something good comes to him, that's pleasing to him, let him give something in charity. You know, give something in charity just to show your thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something good happened to you, you know, I got a raise at work. Okay, let me give more charity than I gave before. If something good happened to me, I got a gift. Let me give some of this gift to somebody else. As soon as something good happens to you, think, how can I reap it? How can I show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gratefulness? But don't think that it automatically means that everything is okay because that is the way that dictators and kings have fought for years and years and years and years. And look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to them. It was all leading them on. It was all just a facade. It was just a mirage, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them suddenly. And what becomes more dangerous is when we think that this is going to translate into the next life. Remember in Surah Al Kaf, you have the men of the gardens. So you have one man who's got his garden, and you've got the other man who's got the big gardens. Right? And the man who doesn't have as much as him is giving him advice. He's telling him to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, Man, I don't think this is ever going to go away. And I don't believe that the hour is coming anytime soon. 
What I am will do to Ila Rabbi, but even if I die soon, I'm still a young guy and I still got time, and I'm still healthy, alhamdulillah. But even if I die soon, what does he think is going to happen? I'm going to see even better in the hereafter. If, if God gave me all of this now, then imagine what He's going to give me then. We should never be fooled by that. When Allah gives me more, there is more test than that. There is more, there is more chance for me to be deceived by that wealth and be deceived by that luxury. Now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the other side, and I'll end with this inshaAllah. And then if He tests him, the same person, He's talking about the same human being, the same one who said, Rabbi Akraman, my Lord is pleased with me. Look, Allah loves me. Look what Allah gave me. The same human being, if he's tested. And Allah just restrained some of his wealth. Think about this. Allah, this and this ayah is very delicate because Allah is not saying he sent him a hurricane, he sent him a disease, he sent him something. His $200,000 became $100,000. Just something got shrunk a little bit. His risk became a little bit less. A little bit less. What does that person say? He says, My Lord, Ahanan. Ahanan means he abandoned me and he's purposely humiliating me. He starts to blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't tell you how many people that I would have never expected to see this from. When they have a test in their life and when they're coming to seek advice or they're coming to talk about their life, their lives and their hardships, why is Allah doing this to me? What have I ever done wrong? Completely absolving themselves of responsibility. Completely absolving themselves. And it's hard to say to that person because sometimes there are glaring faults. There are glaring faults on that person, glaring sins, but you can't say anything Because the person got so used to the luxury that was coming to them, they thought everything was good. Alhamdulillah, you know, I was getting my luxury, everything was going good in life. I was coming to the masjid, I was attending all the celebrations, I was doing everything I was supposed to do. But they really weren't doing everything they're supposed to do. But you can't say anything at that moment because they're already cursing Allah and blaming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. And this is where the hadith comes in that was still like some said poverty leads to kufr. Poverty leads to kufr. Why? Because that's when the real test comes. The whole time that the good was coming to you, you did not associate the good with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you associated it with your own efforts. But when the bad came to you, then all of a sudden you say, why is God doing this to me? Where is Allah now? Why is Allah doing this to me? Why is Allah putting me through this? Rabbi Ahadan, He abandoned me and He humiliated me. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what was he in reality doing? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was testing that person again. He gave you that wealth, he gave you that blessing, and he took it away. You know, subhanAllah, one of the, the shi'uf Muhammad Hussein Yaqub in Egypt, he told the story, and I'm going to end with the story, I promise. He, he told the story, and he was, remember, he was talking about this guy. And he says, once the sister came to him, and the sister is crying because she had a car accident, and she's saying, why did Allah do this to me? What have I ever done wrong? And she's saying words of atheism, but she doesn't wear hijab. But you see, it's not, he can't tell her at that moment, well, did you ever think about maybe wearing hijab? Did you ever think about having more obedience here or there? He can't say it at that moment. Because the person has already lost it and the person is already associating the bad with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to bring in a command there, you'll completely lose it. And that's why the Messenger Sallallahu said, and, and mark these words, they're such beautiful words. That Rasulullah Sallallahu said to Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, كُلْ مَعَ اللَّهِ فِي الْرِخَاءِ يَعْنُفْكِ فِي الشِّدَّةِ Know Allah in prosperity, Allah will know you in adversity. Meaning what? When Allah knows you, you know Allah. Allah knows us all in the sense of His ilm, that encompasses us all subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah will know you, meaning what? you will have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you'll automatically associate the good in your life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you'll say, maybe it was that disobedience. Maybe I shouldn't have messed up there. Maybe my money wasn't as pure as I thought it was and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was purifying me. So maybe I need to do a little more. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this amongst those who when they are tested, they pass that test, whether it is being tested with bounties or whether it is being tested with hardship. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
that whenever we are given any good from Him, it is a manifestation of His mercy and His love and His reward, and not a manifestation of His anger to test us uh, for our disobedience and ungratefulness. Allahumma amin. We'll continue, inshaAllah. Allah continues to describe these, this person uh, the next uh, week, inshaAllah. Jazakallah khair. Subhanahu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.